Good evening, Restoration. Good evening. It is good to be here. I'm tired. I shouldn't have been doing that dance. Woo. Amen. Gotta catch my breath. God is good. Whew. Jesus. My name is Annie Lewis, and I am a member of Restoration Christian Fellowship. And I thank you all for being here tonight. Whew. Let's pray. That'll help me. <sighs> Jesus. Father God, I come to you right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, I bless you. I honor you, God, for you are worthy. You are worthy for all praise and glory and honor. It's due you. God, we come here tonight to seek your face. We come here tonight to give you glory. We come here tonight to lift you up, God. So be glorified tonight in your people. Thank you for the opportunity tonight, Lord. I pray that you would get all the glory and that you would get all the honor. I ask that you would touch your people. Touch them, Lord, that they would be grateful and thankful to you in all circumstances, in all situations, Lord. We give you praise. We give you honor. For you alone are worthy. In Jesus' name. Thank you, God. First of all, I have been a member of Restoration Christian Fellowship for 10 years. Amen. 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 It was 10 years this past September, and I was like, wow. It didn't seem like it's been that long. But since I've been here, I have done a whole lot of things for this ministry. I worked with the children for a little while. I worked with the high school for a little while. And now I'm working with the middle school for a long while. I've been working with the middle school for quite some time. And let me tell you, it has been a blessing. It has been a trial. It has been work sometimes. So if you see me say, and that stop that. That's my role in middle school. In the middle of a sentence, I might have to check a kid. So um, I'm not going to do that. I'll just let you be bad tonight. But I am number seven of eight children. I am the seventh girl. My mother had seven girls in a row. I'm number seven. There's eight of us. I have a brother. He's the baby. When she had that young boy, that young man, that boy, she stopped. I guess she said, I've been trying and trying and trying for this boy. Now he's here. I'm stopping. I might have a house full of boys like I have a house full of girls right now. So needless to say, I was full rotten because with the last girl, she was tired of girls. And needless to say, with the boy, he was full rotten too. So I am married. I have three boys. Couldn't have no girls. Mom took them all. I, um, I originated, I was born in South Carolina. I was raised in Washington, D.C. in the Virginia area. I graduated from high school in Arlington, Virginia. And at that point, I met my husband in Virginia. He was in the military. And that's how I ended up in Colorado. My husband is a native of Colorado. So when we got married and started having a family, he wanted to come home. And uh, my mom said, go with your husband. So here I am. Here I am in Colorado, but <clears throat> we want to talk about Thanksgiving tonight. We want to talk about being thankful. 
And I can imagine <clears throat> when I was at home. Now, you have to remember, I'm of eight siblings, okay? And we got husbands, we got children, and we got grandchildren. And we got friends and we got cousins all over the place. So when I go home for Thanksgiving, it's a party. Amen. We party from two, Thursday to Sunday evening. In and out, people everywhere, food all over the place, enjoying ourselves. You can't hear so much noise. You can't hear the TV. You can't hear your conversation. You can't have a private place everywhere. People, people, people. Now, my husband, on the other hand, he's the oldest of three. So, with that being said, when I have Thanksgiving here in Colorado, it's an intimate thing. It's very intimate. You can hear the TV. You don't see kids running all over the place. You can find a quiet place. Football game they're enjoying. There's a lot of food, but it's an intimate. It's a big difference. So I love to go home for Thanksgiving because I love people. With that being said, we're going to talk about thankfulness and prayer because they go hand in hand. We have to be thankful to God for everything in every situation in every circumstance. So my scripture tonight is coming from 1 Thessalonians 5. 1 Thessalonians 5. 16, 1 through 18. 16, 1 through 18. And I'm reading from the NIV. And it says, Be joyful always, pray continuously, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. This passage of scripture is to encourage, and I want to encourage you tonight to be thankful in all circumstances, in every situation. Now, joy is a fruit of the spirit. You can be joyous at all times. Joy does not depend on whether you're happy or sad. It doesn't depend on your circumstances or your situation. Joy is a fruit. It's a gift from God when you become a Christian. And so it's a continuance. No matter what the circumstance, what the situation is, God says be joyful. We can't pray 24-7, but our attitude towards prayer and towards God should be gratitude at all times and for all things. So we can, our attitude towards prayer, towards God, is our attitude of thanksgiving, of praise, and we should be ready to pray at any time, no matter what the situation, no matter where you find yourself. If you see a need, first thing you do is to pray. Amen? Amen. Now, I want to talk to you two things, prayer, thanksgiving, okay? Thanksgiving and prayer, hand in hand. Four points I want to bring out about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving for Jesus Christ coming. We should be thankful. Thankful for spiritual blessings. Thankful for physical blessings. Thankful for salvation. For eternal life. Thankful to God for coming. Jesus was up, God, he was up in heaven. He came down to this earth, and he was wrapped himself in human flesh, and he came down, 
in the form of a baby through the mother, through his mother, Mary. Now, I have three boys. Jesus, one. But I can relate to what Mary probably went through with her son. He was dependent on her for everything. He had to learn how to do everything. He had to learn how to talk. He had to learn how to walk. He had to learn how to feed himself. He had to learn how to learn. He had to learn how to, hmm, how do I say this? Learn how to control his bodily functions. Because he was human. He was just like we are. And I know with my sons, I had to teach them everything. They were dependent on me and their dad for everything. So with Jesus coming into the world, he had to learn how to live in this mess, this sin-sickened world. He was Jesus. He was human. With that, he learned how to be holy by, we see him sitting in the temple, learning, listening to the teachers and the elders in the temple, looking and just pondering over all of that he was learning. He learned how to be obedient to God. We have to learn how to be obedient to God. Once we become Christians, we have to learn how to be obedient because our nature is to do whatever we want, whenever we want, okay? Jesus was tempted. He was tempted for 40 days. He was tempted by Satan for 40 days in the wilderness. And... He prevailed. He prevailed with the word of God. Everything that Satan threw at him, he came back with the word of God. He was human just like we are. And if Jesus is our imitator, if he is our example, we need to learn when we're tempted when we get angry, he got baptized, he got angry, and we got baptized, and we got angry. Did we come to God when we were angry and say, Lord, or did we just let it rip to whoever made us angry, tempted us, and then we repented later, Lord, forgive me. Jesus is our righteousness. I am thankful. I am so thankful that he is our example, that he, we are to imitate. And he gave us this whole Bible that we can learn how to imitate him. Amen. There's spiritual gifts. He's given us spiritual gifts. There is the fruit of the spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness. Like I said, joy is, is unconditional. No matter what's going on, it's a fruit of the Spirit. It's in us. Love. You think we love like Jesus loves, unconditional it's a gift. We needed that. We needed that. We don't know how to love. But the fruit of the Spirit says love, unconditional. Treat your neighbor as yourself. Be patient. Be kind with one another. I know I am not the most patient person. I am not the most patient person. I don't. I don't do it. But God says, be patient. And we don't pray for patience because the first thing we say, trials and tribulations come when we want patience. Well, it's teaching you patience. 
It's teaching your patience. Amen? <clears throat> but you know, these fruits of the Spirit, they are gifts from God, and everyone doesn't get those gifts. Those are for God's children. Those are for God's children. The physical gifts and blessings, they're for everybody. God gives us all physical gifts. We have the activities of our limbs. We're able to move about. We're able to walk. We're able to talk. We're able to hear. We're able to see. We're able to be able to, we have a mind and a brain. We're able to think. Those are gifts that God has given everybody. All human beings have those gifts. But we have a responsibility with those gifts. We have to keep our body healthy in order to do God's work, in order to be, uh, to live good and healthy lives. I remember when my mom got sick. Well, she didn't get sick. She had a hernia. And um, she had a hernia for a long time. And at the age of 81, it started to bother her. So the doctor said, you need to get that taken out. It's a hernia. Oh, yeah, Mom, go get the surgery. Get it taken out. It's giving you a hard time. Get rid of it. So she had the surgery. And with the surgery, she, um, she coded, meaning she stopped breathing on the operating table. Once they closed her up, got ready to bring her out to recovery, she stopped breathing. They, they brought her back and they um, put her in the recovery room and she was doing okay. But then she coded again. And this time they brought her back, but she was not functioning like she should. So they put her on the machine, they induced a coma, and she was like that for a while. And so they had to wean her off. And every time they would try to wean her off, she would code, so they put her back on. So we finally had to make that decision whether she could live on the machine or we would just let God do what God does. So we decided to let to take her off, and within five minutes, she passed. So with that being said, she had that. My mom was healthy. She, at 81 years old, she was still living by herself. She was doing everything. She was healthy. With that being said, people were saying, you don't die from a hernia. My son... My middle son, he had a hernia operation when he was about five or eight. I can't remember exactly. He's fine. A couple of days, he's up running around. My mother was 81 years old. We start to deteriorate. We don't move as fast as we used to. We don't hear as good as we used to. And people were saying, people don't die from that. You need to sue that hospital. It's like, no, you don't sue because an 80-year-old lady, and this is my mom I'm talking about, died. It was her time. When they, when they stopped that machine, in five minutes, God was saying, it's time. Come on home. My mother was a Christian. Come on home. Why are we going to try to sue somebody? Anyway, we need to take care of our physical gift that God has given us. Things happen, but we have a responsibility. I'm pushing the envelope every time I go to the doctor, and he doesn't say, you have diabetes. But he keeps telling me, you've got to get that weight off. I'm holding you responsible. I put that out there. I've got to get the weight off. I've got to take care of this temple. Amen. 
salvation, eternal life in Christ Jesus. As we talked about earlier, Jesus came into this world as a little baby. In the process of his life, he started his ministry at 30, and at 33, he was on a cross dying for my sins and for your sins. He took on the cares of this life. He gave us life in the abundance. He died. He gave us salvation. He rose from the grave. He gave us eternal life forever. Good news. I am so thankful to God for every good and perfect gift. Salvation is a good and perfect gift. I'm thankful to God for salvation. Can you imagine hanging on that cross, taking on the sins of the world and still in the process ministering, ministering, saying, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Jesus did it all. He paid the ultimate price for us. I'm thankful tonight. Prayer. Four things I want to touch on, and then I'll be done. Prayer. We confess. What is the benefit of confession? Intercession. Why do we intercede? Petition. Can we go to God for ourselves? Can we make intercession to God for ourselves? Can we, can we do petitions for, for ourselves to God? And listen. When we go to God in prayer and make and, and confess, we confess all the wrong that we have done to God. And he makes all those wrongs right. He makes all those wrongs right. He says, repent. He says, repent. Restore your relationship with me. Repent. When we, when we repent, God makes it all right. Amen. It draws us closer to him. It frees our conscience. It gets to the root of the issue. Our conscience are clear and we don't have to try to do that again. But we're, we know that we have to confess. And we just like we pray daily, we have to confess sometime moment by moment, sometime hour by hour. God is gracious, thankful, thankful to him for the prayer of confession. Intercession, intercession. Why do we intercede? God says we need to pray for one another. Pray for one another. We need to pray for the lost. We need to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We need to pray because it's obedient to God. We need to pray for others because it's being obedient to the Father when we pray for others. It makes God happy. He's pleased when we step back and think about somebody else. He stepped back and he thought about us. And he sent his only precious begotten son because he thought about us. So it pleases God when we intercede on others' behalf, the sick. When we go to God in prayer. 
all. We pray for all. Everybody is God's child. Whether they are Christian or not, he created all of us. And he said that I would, that none should perish, that all would come to salvation. So we need to continually pray for the lost. Amen? Can I make petition for myself? Can I go to God and say, Lord, I need, I want? Amen. I go to God with specifics. And he answers me with specifics because he knows me. He knows me better than I know myself. And he loves me with an everlasting love. So, yeah, I can go to God with a petition, asking him what I need and what I want. He says he takes care of all my needs. Sometimes he takes care of my wants. Amen. Amen. Listen, when we go to God in prayer, we just, like microwaves, hurry up, let's get it done. We sit there and we pray and we read our word, we do our devotion. And I love what Pastor Derek said. He's starting to take time to listen, to hear God's voice what he wants to say to me once I get finished spewing all of my mess, all of my stuff on him. What does he want to say in return to me? We say, he didn't answer me. Well, you didn't give him a chance. You didn't, give, you didn't wait. You didn't listen. My sheep know my voice. We should know God's voice. And we should be patient and take time, get silent before him, and listen for instructions, for correction, for direction. Confirmation. God is good. I'm thankful that he listens and he hears my prayer and he answers me. I'm thankful. I am thankful to God. Amen. Prayer. Prayer is nourishment for our souls. It gives us joy and happiness in the Lord. Prayer sustains us when life gets messy. Daily prayer sustains us when the cares of this life is choking us. Prayer brings peace in the midst of the storm. I'm thankful that God has given us the gift of prayer. Amen? With Thanksgiving, I want to read something to you, and then I'll be... Amen? It says, Thanksgiving is expression of gratitude and grace, our appreciations to God. The obligation is acknowledging, acknowledged by the universe sentiments of mankind. Everybody gives thanks. But for the Christian, grace comes with special, specific blessings. It is gratitude for all the benefits of the divine, uh, for the divine provision, especially for the personal gift of redemption, which is the grace of God in Christ operating in the souls of the believer as a principle and ongoing and, and going back to him in gratitude for all he's done in providing us salvation through his death and resurrection. Rejoice that we have in Christ an ever and an eternal gift and, a, and the everlasting gift of the Holy Spirit we possess in Him, making every possible option of the divine time is a sign for good. The Christian privilege 
is to find reason for gratitude in all things. Gratitude in all things. Amen. In everything, give thanks to God, for this is his will in Christ Jesus. If you can't think of a reason to be thankful on Thanksgiving tomorrow, you know that's my favorite holiday. I love Thanksgiving. But if you can't think of a reason to be thankful, think about Jesus, Jehovah Jireh. The Lord provides. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Can I pray with you for a minute? Can I pray? Thank you, Lord. Father God, we come. I come saying thank you, Father. Thank you for this privilege to stand before your people. Thank you for this opportunity, Lord. I pray that something was said, God, that brought you glory. I pray, God, that the ears of your people heard your sweet voice through this message, wooing and woeing them to come to you in every situation, in every circumstance, because you are the answer. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father. We bless you tonight. We honor you, God. We praise your holy and divine name. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>